to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority regular meeting agenda. Today is October the 18th, uh, and it is approximately 5.38 p.m. At this time, I believe we would have any comments from the public? City Clerk? No comments. No comments. Uh, please note attendance. At this time, Mr. Pacheco has walked in, right on time. President. Uh, at this time, being that there are no... Oh, the bell. Go ahead. Here. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. I guess without anything else to do, we will convene to uh, close session. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the Calexico City Council. Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority, special meeting. We're gonna have a special meeting first, uh, technicality, to fit in a special meeting agenda today, Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. We just came out of closed session, so is there any report, uh, City Attorney? Uh, for the uh, regular meeting agenda, there's no reportable actions. Okay, I'll ask you again on the next one. Uh, City Clerk, if you could take a note of our attendance today. Mayor Hurtado. Here. Mayor Pichem Pacheco. Here. Council Member Escobar. Here. Council Member Hodge. Here. Council Member Real. Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. Um, we will be now doing our Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. David Romero, would you lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance? We don't have a flag today, but you've got to look north. Facing north is that way. <laughs> we do that once in a while, David. Excuse you. To the flag. Thanks, David. <laughs> uh, the invocation's not on this one either. The invocation's not on this one either. Let's it is. Do it. You could just do it. This one. Okay. Just do it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we, we got a little bit of a confusion, but go ahead. We, we all have time for Jesus. Amen. Could you please stand? Thank you. Then the Lord God planted a garden in the region of Eden in the east, and there he put a man he had formed. He also made all kinds of beautiful trees, grow which gave good fruit to eat. Good and faithful God, we are the work of your hands, the crown of your creation. You love us so much that you have endowed to the human beings with the ability to be co-creators with you. Fatherhood and motherhood, help us to be open to your creative grace. We recognize that the first teachers and educators are the parents. Help us with your wisdom so we can advise from love and responsibility. Help us, Lord, to be humble enough to recognize when we make mistakes and know how to ask for forgiveness even from our children. Let us transmit the future generation the values of this beautiful nation, the founding fathers of this nation, where respect and freedom are not concepts, but life style for us. We thank the institutions and the people who dedicate all their life to educate, that they may be collaborators of truth, which each human beings will be realized. And we ask all this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Do apologize. Uh, we have a usual agenda that we follow, and we just have something very special today. Why we needed to uh, have a special meeting agenda, which is something that Calexico is experiencing at this moment, which is some changes to our our border wall. 
So we have an item here, which is our only item uh, to discuss before our regular meeting, which is um, item number one, the acceptance of a donation of the border mural panels from the Border Patrol. So I believe that there's going to be here someone today to make a presentation, or Car Ms. Carmen Durazo? <coughs> Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I can give you a little brief oh, okay. on it. I, I, I believe uh, uh, several, several months ago, our CBP came to us and gave us a, a, an update on what they're intending to do at the border, and I think that they're trying to replace several miles of fence, and uh, there was an interest by certain groups to be able to retain some of those panels, some of that fence, uh, uh, to retain it as art because there was a great deal of work that was, that was placed uh, several years ago to make sure they looked uh, better. And I believe uh, Ms. Ms. Durazo is here if, if you, if you want to interject and add more to it. But there's, a, there's an offer uh, by the Border Patrol for us to retain several panels. And we think two, three to four panels and that we perhaps we can use them to keep that, uh, that piece of history uh, intact and maybe have it display uh, at parks or some other places in the city. So you, you want to add more to it, Mr. Russell? I thought it was very interesting to hear you tell me the time that we talked about it, that it was the longest piece of artwork ever. It was like so many it's, miles. It's the longest mural of a, on a border fence in the world. And uh, it was all done because we, it was the first time we couldn't see across to Mexicali and we're two communities that are tied through friendship, economics, and most of all, family, and we didn't like that. Well, ironically, they're gonna take it down and replace it with a fence that they can see through. So, but the goal originally was to remember, based on a friendship bracelet, that we are friends, even though a fence may separate us. And 1,500 volunteers, the schools, and a lot of other people painted that fence, including St. Mary's, uh, <laughs> right, sister? So um, we, we would like to retain some of it as a history of Calexico, and since we're celebrating our 110th anniversary next year in April, it would be fitting. So the Border Patrol has graciously agreed to give us some of those panels to restore in place in other places in the city. If you approve this, I will be having a meeting, and I'd like the council to participate, anyone from the city staff and anyone from the city who would like to participate, so we can brainstorm as to what to do with those panels, make them safe, how to redo them and put them up in different places. It is part of our history. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, any comments? Well, I always support the arts, and I think that this is a very important step that we should take. Um, it, uh, well, I, I like Escobar's word. It behooves us to move forward on it um, for ourselves and future generations. To preserve our culture and our art. <clears throat> Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Pacheco, second by Mr. Real. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And thank you very much, Carmen, very much for all that hard, for work. All your hard work. Without you, we wouldn't be doing that right now. All righty. Moving on then to our regular scheduled agenda. I'm not going to repeat. However, um, I wasn't able to ask our attorney for a closed session report because it wasn't on our last agenda. So I will now appropriately do so. Thank you, Mayor. City Council met on three items in closed session. We did receive direction, but no reportable actions were taken. Thank you. Thank you. I don't believe we need to do roll call again either or Pledge of Allegiance or the invocation. So therefore, uh, we could go ahead and begin our regular agenda. Uh, I'd like uh, a vote, please, to approve our agenda today. So moved. Second. First by Mr. Real, second by <coughs> Mr. Pacheco. All in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Okay, announcements. These proceedings may be viewed on the <coughs> City of Calexico website, uh, www.calexico.ca.gov, the Friday following the Calexico City Council meeting. Um, we will start. We have several different presentations today, so please bear with us. Uh, sometimes we get a collection of them all at once, so today might be a long day. Um, we'll start first with... Uh, I'm going to skip because I believe the Legaspi family, or they are here now. Yeah, I already saw them. Okay, we're going to start with number four, which is the proclamation honoring Henry Hank Legaspi for his service to the community of the city of Calexica. And his family is right here.
Okay. Whereas, the Calexico City Council believes that it is important that we honor and acknowledge those people who out of love for our city positively impact our community. And, whereas the passing of Mr. Henry Hank Legaspi on October 11th, 2017 has brought immense sorrow and loss to people throughout the community and or as Mr. Legaspi served in the United States Navy and was a veteran of World War II, whereas Mr. Legaspi served our community through various positions held within the Imperial Irrigation District from 1953 to 1995, culminating in his retirement as manager of power and, whereas he was elected to the Calexico Unified School District Board in 1970, where he was a devoted supporter of teachers and advocate for improving our education system, and whereas Mr. Legaspi served as commissioner in the Calexico Planning Commission for various years and endeavored to improve the quality of life in Calexico, and whereas Mr. Legaspi served as the Calexico City Manager from 1996 to 1998 with the objective of implementing fiscally responsible policies and practices improving public services by increasing efficiency, providing higher quality service to the community at lower cost, and addressing the community's emergency service needs, and... Whereas he supported and was active with various community-based organizations, such, such as the Knight of Columbus, the Calexico Cultural Arts Center, the Ham Radio Club, Calexico Little League, and local Vietnam veterans, and whereas... Mr. Legaspi created a strong and vibrant community by promoting safe and healthy activities for our children through the Recreation Department to ensure the community had access to the municipal swimming pool, baseball fields, and athletic programs. This was often achieved with the donation of his personal time and money. Whereas Mr. Legaspi was a distinguished Calexico resident whose work with the City of Calexico, the Imperial Irrigation District, and community-based organizations earned him the highest esteem of his family, friends, and the community at large. Mr. Legaspi's lifetime achievements stand as a testament for others who strive for the best of, in their personal, professional, and community life. Now, therefore... The City Council of the City of Calexico hereby expresses its deepest sympathy at the passing of Mr. Henry Hank Legaspi, and by this proclamation, memorialize him for his illustrious record of personal, professional, and civic achievements, as well as a lifetime of service to the City of Calexico and the Imperial Valley. In witness whereof, I hereto affix my signature and official seal of the City of Calexico this 18th day of October, 2017. Thank you. I just want to remember Henry as when I was a 18-year-old going to IVC. <laughs> had a lot of free time. Had a lot of free time, so I would go to the Little League. And I would see that there was a lack of umpires. So I asked the gentleman in charge if he wouldn't mind me umpiring. And 
it was Mr. Legaspi. On top of the dugout, there was a little, little room where you put away the bases and the mask for the umpires and, and the chest protectors. And, and he would always keep score. So there was my first initial contact with him. And I did that as a volunteer. And he remembered that. And I did that for maybe two years. I had a lot of free time when I was 19. I lived two blocks away. And I got to know Mr. Legaspi very well. And after a game, I'd go up and say, was he really out at home? He would confirm it. Yeah, he was out. You did the right call. You did the right thing. He was out. So, uh, and then later on, and as time passed, of course, he was a school board member. And then uh, he worked for the city. And my first time that I ran for city council, he was the first person I went for, for advice. He was a, a great person. I'm going to miss him. Thank you so much, Mr. Pacheco. Very nice. And he will be missed. Number five, moving on to number five, we are going to be giving a presentation to the employee of the quarter. Excellent. Yay. Yeah. We haven't done that in a little while, right. so and we're really excited, and especially the recipient is very deserving. It was a very much a, a surprise, a good surprise, not a shock, but uh, <laughs> I'm so glad we're doing this. So tell us, who's, who's the lucky <laughs> candidate now? This Mayor, month? council well, members, and distinguished audience, it's my pleasure to today introduce to you Leopoldo Miramon. Leo, will you please join me? All right. as we all call him, has been working with the city of Calexico since 2007. But prior to that, he was actually working as a police explorer when, at the age of 14. So he's been with Calexico for quite a while, volunteering and also working for the city. Leo, as a public safety dispatcher, puts in many hours. They usually work 12-hour shifts, limited staff, and sometimes by themselves. While he's working, he always works the holidays, birthdays, again, different shifts. A normal day for Leo consists of dispatching for police, fire, EMS, animal control, traffic and meter division, and other law enforcement agencies, as well as answering 911 calls, regular business calls, and lobby calls and walk-ins from fire and police department personnel who come in to inquire about different things. He also enters all stolen vehicle and property submissions into the California Telecommunications Teletype System. And we received quite a few nominations and they were all excellent. But Leo came up on top after reviewing it, his nomination. Because one of the things that he did, that in addition to doing everything he does, he also took the time to actually look at the surveillance cameras. And he noticed on one, he was a very, very busy shift, but he was looking at the Friendship Park, the border park for illegal activity at the cameras. And there he noticed that there was a suspicious subject at the park drinking an alcoholic beverage while also holding a plastic bag. Leo alerted <laughs> an officer to the subject. And as the officer arrived at the park, Leo saw the subject toss the plastic bag. Leo told the officer of the actions of the subject and led him to the plastic bag via the camera. The officer located a large amount of methamphetamine drugs. The subject was arrested and prosecuted for possession of illegal drugs for sale and transportation. Therefore, going, he went over and beyond on his job. And the other thing, too, is that we acknowledge as the city of Calexico that any business center, any organization their foundation is the employees, and therefore it's important to recognize them. And today we are very pleased to recognize Leo for his contributions to the community of Calexico as well as the city. And Leo, we are going to present you, first and foremost, with a check for $150 for you to spend anywhere you want. <laughs> All right, Leo. I know where he's spending certificate of recognition. Thank you for a well... Um, Job well done. Thank 
Any words, Dio? Oh. oh, words. Oh, you, words. Gotta, you gotta say something, man. You gotta say something. You talk all day on the phone. Is it true? <laughs> yes, it's, it's all true. Um, I'm extremely honored. Um, I couldn't, I was shocked when I was told, actually. Um, there's not much to say. I mean, law enforcement runs in my blood, especially here in Calexico. I had an uncle that worked here back in the 70s. My brother worked here in the 80s, or I believe 80s. 80s. Um, when I started off as a police explorer, the chief himself was a rookie, and I met him. Uh, Lieutenant Gerardo got him hooked on being a police officer. <laughs> That's my fault that he's here. Um, yeah, we just, it's been a long term, a long um, awaiting uh, to work for the police department. I finally got a chance 10 years ago, and I, I won't go anywhere else. Even during the times of, you know, hardships, I want to stay here. I don't want to look anywhere else. This is my city. I was born actually in Calexico, raised here in Calexico. And yes, Mr. Pacheco, I remember you when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> Just like you remember. <laughs> right, Dulsco. So yeah, I have history here, and I'm very, very proud to get this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, picture. No, no. You gonna photo bomb? Or are you gonna? So you're responsible, Gerardo? Give me that check back. <laughs> congratulations, Leo. Sincerely, congratulations, Leo. Um, we've had a lot of talk in all these years that I've been here, too, and yes. There were times, but I'm so glad you stayed. Just to remind everyone, he, he is one of our major uh, 911 operators and takes care of your city. So thank you so much, Leo. Okay, moving on to a very special item here on, on our presentation. Item number six is a proclamation in celebration of the 90th anniversary of Our Lady of Guadalupe Academy. And we are graced here by very beautiful ladies representing the Academy. Whereas, Our Lady of Guadalupe Academy began when Father Picarelli petitioned the Archdiocese of San Diego to begin a Catholic school to serve the local communities of Calexico and Mexicali. And, whereas the Archdiocese of San Diego granted permission in late 1926 to begin classes on January 1st, 1927. And, whereas the Academy opened with three students and three sisters from the religious community of Sister Servants of the Blessed Sacrament. And whereas establishing an atmosphere of faith, love, respect, and community is part of the school's mission of striving for excellence. Whereas the Academy has worked diligently to form tomorrow's leaders with a heart filled with positive character traits and a mind prepared to handle the academic and social challenges of the time, and whereas the Academy has educated many generations with the latest educational research tools and practices, and whereas thousands of students have passed through their doors and benefited from the education provided by the Catholic sisters and committed professional individuals, and Whereas, after 90 years, the Academy services the needs of its 435 students' population in, and their families, and... 
Now, therefore, I, Maritz Hurtado, mayor of the city of Calexico, do proclaim on this date the celebration of the 90th anniversary of Our Lady of Guadalupe Academy, and together with the City Council of the City of Calexico, thank all of those who have served the Academy for their tireless dedication and faithful service to the community. In witness whereof, I here to affix my signature and official seal of the City of Calexico on the 18th day of October, 2017. Congratulations. <laughs> Did you want to say any words or do you want us to go out there? You want to say a few words first? Well, well, thank you. It's a great honor. You know, our call to be religious uh, calls us to love and to serve. And Calexico has given us the opportunity of loving and serving. We have really enjoyed, I came in 1959, and I know that entire families, I, I had an opportunity to teach uh, members of the entire family at different grade levels. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's something that I will never forget, and it has been a great motivation in my religious vocation. We appreciate your kindness in recognizing what the academy is doing and has done in the past. I'm Sister Maria Paz. Sister Ana Rosa and I came together back in 1959. And um, we have always kept in our hearts the love for Calexico. I have moved to different places. And now that we celebrated the 90th anniversary, I was able to say Calexico has always opened arms and souls to all of the sisters. So it was very touchy. And the sisters that had not experienced that, had been in other places, there's a special love for us in, in, for the city of Calexico. And we have been able to see many uh, graduates do service to the community in different, not only in Calexico, but in different parts, both of both cities, Mexicali, Calexico, El Centro, and uh, other places. So God bless Calexico, and uh, we, it's for us an honor to be able to celebrate these 90 years. It, the history comes alive with this celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
Buenas tardes. Sisters, blessed be God. Una cosa que extrañé un poquito cuando me fui a Vincent en 1987 es la pequeña transición entre el blessed be God y ya te crees mucho porque ya estás en la high school. Y espero, no sé si regresó porque ya de 87 ya fue y vino, pero en ese entonces no había blessed be God. Eh, les, eh, de, de todo corazón. Eh, sí me pongo muy emocional porque la verdad el respeto que le tengo tanto a usted como a ustedes es tremendo. Tengo ya casi un año aquí en, en concilio y nunca he estado tan nervioso como ahora. Eh, les tengo un, tre un tremendo respeto, eh, no por miedo, no me tocó esa época. Me tocó la sistema de Virginia, pero esa es otra historia. Pero, pero... Es que la conciencia. Consci no me ayudes, man, no me ayudes. Pero de todo corazón les agradezco la dedicación y el cariño que le han demostrado a Caléxico. Soy un poquito racista porque yo sé que está St. Mary, está Instituto Villa Fontana, aquí en Mexicali, en el centro. Obviamente yo soy Olga y defiendo a la Olga a capa y a espada. Y a la Vincent ni se diga. Eh, las quiero mucho. Les agradezco de todo corazón lo que han hecho por nuestra comunidad. Las uh, siervas, de Jesús, siervas de Jesús sacramentado han tenido un tremendo... Valor agregado a esta comunidad que muchas veces no se les agradece. Eh, yo me pongo muy emocionado en ese aspecto porque yo sé que sacrifican mucho y pocas veces les agradece el que dejan a sus familias. Yo sé que la mayoría son de Jalisco, una que otra de Michoacán. Pero, o sea, ven a sus familias una o dos veces al año en los mejores de los casos. Con nosotros, gracias a Dios, en las épocas buenas y malas, pues estamos con nuestras familias. Entonces, esa dedicación, ese cariño que nos han demostrado acá léxico, a mí en lo personal se agradece tremendamente. Las respeto y las quiero muchísimo. Gracias, Pica. All righty, moving on to the next presentation. Uh, it's item number seven, Proclamation for Fire Prevention Month. Again, the month of October is pretty busy. So, guys, ready with your... My favorite month. Where's our fire chief? I hope I die in October. Fire chief, we're going to do yours today. I mean, now. Hmm? I hope I die in October. Whereas, my favorite fire prevention month. month, October 2017. Whereas, each year, during the month of October, the fire department takes the opportunity to remind the citizens of the devastating impact fire has on each of us. And whereas, public safety is a top priority in the city of Calexico, California, and... Whereas Calexico's own dedicated firefighters and paramedics answered the call day and night 4,580 times last year in an effort to help people in need. And whereas it is time of year, it is the time of year when we honor our Calexico career firefighters for their exemplary courage and dedication to the community. Whereas this year's Fire Prevention Month theme for the National Fire Prevention Association is have two ways out. And whereas Calexico's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education and. Whereas the 2017 Fire Prevention theme, every second counts, plan two ways out. Effect effectively serves to educate the public about the vital importance of developing a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practicing it twice a year. Whereas home fire escape plans should be developed by all members of the household and Whereas a home fire escape plan provides the skill set and know-how how to quickly and safely escape from a fire situation and whereas a home fire escape plan includes two exits from every room in a home, a path to outside from each exit, smoke alarms and all required locations, and a meeting place outside where everyone in the home will meet upon exiting. And whereas practicing a home fire escape plan twice a year ensures that everyone in the household knows what to do in case of a real fire situation. Now, therefore, I, Marit Surtado, Mayor of the City of Calexico, do hereby pro proclaim the month of October 2017 as Fire Prevention Month and urge all residents of, the, of Calexico to develop a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practice it twice a year. In witness whereof, I here to affix my signature and official seal of the City of Calexico on this 18th day of October 2017. 
in consideration of the fires that are happening right now in Northern California, I think it's highly important to respect the fact that yep. uh, it is very important to have a plan. And uh, even uh, nationally and, and as a city, we also need to, to be prepared. And I know that our fire department is working really hard to do that. We do have some uh, firefighters that have gone up north, correct, and are, are assisting as, as we always do. So much respect. Um, I'm not sure if you want to come up here and take a picture because we've been doing that a lot today. But <laughs> no, okay. Um, so thank yes. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pictures are optional at this point. <laughs> So moving on to the next one. Um, item number eight is now proclamation of Calexico Red Ribbon Week. And I think that's the last one, right? Yeah. After that, we'll have David Dale presenting. David, if you'd like to come to the batter's box and get ready. All righty. Whereas alcohol and drug abuse in this nation have reached epi epidemic stages and... Whereas it is imperative that visible unified prevention education efforts by community members be launched to eliminate, eliminate the demand for drugs and whereas the national red ribbon campaign offers citizens the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to drug-free lifestyles and whereas the national red ribbon campaign will be celebrated in every community in america during red ribbon 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 Week, excuse me, Too many. <laughs> October 30, 23rd to 31st, and? Whereas business, businesses, government, parents, law enforcement, media, medical institution, religious institutions, schools, senior citizens, services, organizations, and the youth will demonstrate their commitment to healthy, drug-free lifestyle by wearing and displaying a red ribbon during this week-long campaign, and whereas the community of the city of Calexico further commits its resources to ensure the success of Red Ribbon Campaign. Now, therefore, I, Maritz Hurtado, Mayor of the City of Calexico, California, do hereby proclaim October 23rd to the 31st, 2017, as Red Ribbon Week, and encourage its citizens to participate in drug prevention education activities, not only during Red Rib Ribbon Week, but, <laughs> but all year long making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug-free Calexico, California. In witness whereof, I, I here to affix my signature and official seal of the city of Calexico on the 18th day of October, 2017. I know that I see Mr. Acuna. You want to say a few words for Red Ribbon Week? <laughs> Why is it the tongue twister here going off everybody? <laughs> I started it. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Alberto Acuña. I'm a retired, uh, recently retired state parole agent. I worked for the Department of Corrections for 23 years. Uh, the last eight years I worked here at Imperial County. And the, my first years that I started working was with the Southern California Drug Treatment Program. It was a program that we had right next to the county jail and the probation department. That's where I got my experience uh, working with the youth um, since it was the California Youth Authority I started uh, back in 1992, I started uh, taking some um, people to the high schools to do anti-drug presentations. Now that I'm retired, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do it as a community service. Um, beginning uh, next week on the 23rd, 24th, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start doing anti-drug presentations, normally for sixth graders at Kennedy Gardens Elementary School. Then I have some teachers here from Cesar Chavez and a couple of kids that I'm going to be doing the presentations on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. I'm also going to be part of, uh, uh, I think uh, next year there's going to be the uh, health and safety fair, which I'll have a display and uh, drug identification information for the kids. Um, I normally pick sixth graders because they're getting ready to go to middle school, which is at the time where they're going to be influenced a lot. Uh, they're going to be... Uh, pressure, there's going to be a lot of uh, misinformation that they're going to get, I, uh, of course, lies. And I do implement a video that, uh, that is called uh, They Lied, and it has to do with the uh, peer pressure and some of the lies that they're going to be facing uh, on a daily basis in some cases. So I am a Calexico High School graduate, 1987. Actually, we're celebrating our 30th uh, uh, anniversary this year. I went to Duel. Uh, uh, actually, from being from Kennedy Gardens, we started a duo back in, uh, those were my first four years. Then uh, when they opened Kennedy Gardens, I did fifth and sixth grade. De Anza, 
Calexico High School, IBC, San Diego State here locally, so I'm definitely here from the Valley, which is where I'm trying to involve myself with the community service. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Acuna. Would you like to take a picture with the council, if it's okay? Yes. Of course, okay. but I just wanted to ask, why is it that we say we're retired, but you're really not? Uh, well, I recently just started uh, being a substitute teacher. But that's teacher. good, though. You're retiring, but Same you're really here. not. Uh, yeah, you're I just find recently... Another yeah, I know. That's good. So we I need started, you. I started being a sub recently, so... Some of us, it's hard to retire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you too. But yeah. You're not, that's good. But awesome. we need you. Exactly, exactly that we need. So I, These are some of the places that kids have been talented uh, last year, this year. They're going to be doing... Uh, they're going to be tricking their hands, and they're going to be doing... Uh, How you been? Thank you so much. See you in the school soon. Okay, the one we've been waiting for here for a while. <laughs> Mr. Dale, do you think you maybe can present in like three minutes? Yeah? Okay. Because we only have three minutes. Where's Kachu? Okay, we're just going to take a few minutes to allow um, our setup you, here. Okay, good. Just take a, just a short little break, if you don't mind. We're going to take a, a short one-minute break. Okay.
Okay, just say hey, do we want to make sure? Okay. Yeah, on my stuff, when I send you, you can forward them to the other side. Okay. Just, just have a yeah. book, book, book as well, that way they're going to be able to get mentioned maybe, I don't know if you're going to be able to mention that. Yeah, the signing ceremony for the new paper. I think I'm bringing up an announcement for the new paper. Yeah. yeah. So I think I can just call them. Yeah, you'll call them. We'll call them on that item. Maybe he's here to serve us. Okay, let's uh, we're gonna run around. Uh, no, not run around. We're gonna stop this. Um, Last call. Oh no, that's not. For the next meeting, the Boy Scouts will like to be here. They'll be doing it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna reconvene here in about one minute. Boy Scouts. So if anybody's out there, Mr. Hodge. To have it when they get there. Uh, the citizen. They wanna be here to do. Have it when they get there. Uh, what? What? All right. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, we're going to reconvene and, and initiate where we left off. And we left off in item number nine, presentation by Mr. David Dale, Public Works Director, City Engineer, on the overview and progress of the Public Works Capital Improvement Program, CIP. Mr. Dale. Did we start or you want to You, wanna you guys would second? like to take your seat? We're going to start up. <laughs> Attention. And somebody, if they could please Attention. close that door. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thanks. The Thanks, film guys. will be starting in just a minute. Those are our sergeant at arms. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay, this this is a short presentation requested uh, by Councilman Escobar. Uh, this is to inform you, the council, um, honorable council and mayor. Uh, also, this is for to let the uh, residents know where we stand on our CIP this year. I'm going to start in sections. First section, we have uh, water treatment. This is ex right out of our CIP, so this is exactly how it's written in our CIP. Our water treatment facility needs a lot of upgrades, but these are the main ones we have scheduled for this year. Um, as you can see, there are five there. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 55,000, 1.2 million, 80,000, 1.65 million. But we'll go real quick. The, uh, the THM analyzer that's going to be required, we'll be working on that later on this year. The emergency generator replacement project is ongoing. Construction has already started. And we expect construction to complete, uh, be completed in February 2018. The vehicle and equipment replacement is also on our CAP. This is going to be on each one of these items here. But uh, that we're working on an RFP for a possible lease of some new vehicles. The city has all a bunch of old vehicles. And as every year new vehicles come out, safety increases. We want to get some new vehicles. And that is working on, on an RFP. A filter control replacement project that was recently added to the CIP. We started, we started working on the uh, RFP internally so we can set that out to bid. We expect that project to be done around June 2018. Uh, we also have a chlorine unloading ramp. That's uh, another project that we added to this this year. That's an important uh, project because right now we need to, uh, we're not unloading the chlorine correctly and it has to be flat. So we're working on that project. So we're engineering that uh, in-house and we expect that project maybe to be done in May of 2018. That's at the water treatment plant. We have a lot of other maintenance items, but these are the main CIP items at the water treatment plant. Water distribution. We've got a lot of projects, a water pipeline replacement program. We have this scheduled for every year. Um, this is actually just to replace broken pipelines. We're getting a one to two pipelines are breaking every week. Uh, we have a lot of old pipeline infrastructure that needs to be replaced. Uh, we want to work on a systematic replacement project, but right now we're, we're just uh, being reactive and not proactive because we don't have the resources yet to uh, work on that. So all we're doing is replacing pro uh, pipelines that break at this moment. We want to, we want to work on a proactive, but right now we're reactive. F uh, fifth and Cesar Chavez, 24-inch water pipeline. That's $1.2 million. That needs to be done uh, concurrently or with uh, 
or before the Cesar Chavez project because the water pipeline crosses Cesar Chavez, and we'll get into that. But uh, the, the estimated completion date right now is February 2018. The engineering is nearing completion on that. Uh, as you may know, uh, the city replaced some uh, the meters with automatic meters in 2015. That project's actually still ongoing. Uh, we scheduled 200,000 this year, and uh, recently the council approved some funds to increase uh, our, some of the meters that we needed to add. We need to add meters for the parks and some municipal buildings uh, per California code. We're working on that. Uh, again, this is, this is right out of the CIP, so you'll see this item repeated, but vehicle and equipment replacement, uh, again, we're working on that RFP. The water system master plan, you might, might recall this, the council approved a few meetings back, and so we've, we've already started on the engineering on that, and we, we expect that to be done somewhere in April of 2018. Uh, um, as you know, we're also uh, putting out an RFP for a water rate study. That RFP is due at the city um, on um, October the 25th. So we expect the proposals to be at the city at, at that date. And when we, when we sent those proposals out to a committee for review, uh, we'll send the, uh, the re recommended proposal to the council at that time. Uh, we have a boiler replacement project. We had to uh, c cancel that one and, and restart the engineering. The engineering is nearing completion. We had to um, add some electrical engineering on that. We're expecting uh, that to be in April 2018. The heat exchanger, which is a part of, or should have been a part of the boiler project, that's also in, in the engineering phase, which is included in the boiler project. Uh, we expect April, somewhere in April of 2018. So you can kind of see right now that a lot of projects are going to be happening in 2018. Right now we're sort of in the planning phases on a lot of these things. Um, we, we, scheduled, we scheduled quite a bit of money for the wastewater treatment plant um, at earlier this year because we, we knew there's a lot of things that need to be upgraded at the wastewater plant. We don't know exactly what we were going to do. We scheduled a million dollars. Um, but w what we're going to do is we're going to wait, we're, gonna, we're preparing an RFP uh, for a wastewater master plan. And that's going to that's gonna dictate, and also we uh, applied for $5 million of, of grant funding from, through BEC, so we're going to see how that happens in uh, December. So we don't have an estimated date for that because we're, that's an ongoing uh, project, but we're, we're, we're sort of waiting for that on an hold pattern. And again, you see the vehicles. Each department here, uh, if you look at our vehicle list, and you can actually, when you see the vehicles around town, you see them, 1998, 1999 vehicles, you know, they're, they're out of date and they need to be replaced. Wastewater collection system. We have a, 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 an old system, and so part of that system is sewer manholes, and those need to be re rehabilitated. We did one this year, uh, and we, we want to do one to two every year at least. But that will be identified again in the wastewater master plan, which we're working on, which is number five. Um, that's, we, I put September 2017 because we already rehab, we did one manhole this year. The lift station replacement, again, we want to wait for the wastewater master plan. We're working on that RFP. Um, a, a number four, wastewater rate study. Again, that, that was what we already discussed. That's going along with the water rate study, and we expect the RFPs in two, uh, this month later on. Uh, transportation projects, this should be pretty interesting to the residents here. The New River Parkway project, which uh, I, I hope a lot of you know about, uh, we I just got, um, we're working on the authority to construct the plans already. And so we're ready to move forward. As you can see, the funding sources down there, if you're interested, this is 80% federal and 20% state project. So it's all grant funds. Most of these projects here, you're going to see are grant funds from the state or federal. Uh, expected uh, completion date is next year again. We're going to start the, the bidding process pretty soon when we get authority. Uh, we have. Is that one a little bit just going to detail to what it is for the benefit of the community? Sure, sure. I just want to hurry up because I know I only got three minutes. So, uh, excuse me for being uh, rapid. But the New River Parkway project is going to be a really cool um, project for residents here that you can go take your bike out there. You can um, do hiking over there um, on the New River by the airport. It's going to be a really cool uh, project for um, people who want to bicycle or just, just for um, walking. It's going to be a great, great little place there, over there by the river. And, and we also have some other projects that are ongoing over there, um, and, and that will be discussed in another time. But some big projects going on in that area right now. Um, the street overlay project, you, you might have seen a lot of streets got overlaid from um, this year. 
And we expect another a street overlay project. We're already working on the engineering for that. The funding is coming from Measure D. And uh, we're looking at a compl another completion date of June of 2018 on that one. So you'll see a lot, of, a lot more streets being overlaid um, as a part of that project. And those, again, Measure D funds. We're working on a bicycle master plan project. And that's ongoing. It's almost complete. We have, a, we have a draft of that, and we expect it to be complete of February 2018. Uh, they will be here for the um, October 21st health fair that Heffernan's putting on, so if you want to come and look at the master plan, please, please come to that. Uh, so again, that is, that's grant funds. Um, we have, if you didn't know, we have a second street bridge widening project going on right now. Those plans are also complete. If you might see over there by the Grand Plaza, the bridge is kind of, of narrow. Yeah, that's going to be widened, and uh, again, that's, the funds are already in place through Measure D and some RDA bonds for that one, and we're, so we're expecting that one. It may take a little longer. It may not get done this, this fiscal year, but it, it, at least it'll be in the beginning or mid next year. Cesar Chavez widening project, you're going to see that start probably around February of 2018, if all goes well. That's a huge project. It's going to connect the, the port of entry to um, all the way from the second street to Highway 98. So those plans, again, 100% done. We're just waiting for authority from the state to start the project and to start the bidding. Um, starting somewhere in February, completion maybe somewhere in December. So that's gonna be a really nice project for, this, for the city. Parks Capital Improvement, this is just a list of the, some of the projects we have. Um, the Joel Risen, we have IID gave us grant funds for $150,000 uh, to put some lighting at that park, it desperately needed. Um, we have also um, got some grant funds for Cordova Park through the city manager's office, worked on grant funds, and we, and we got a good $120,000 for that. We're gonna, you're gonna see some playground happening there, some other, some other improvements. Um, that's not the main, the, the main baseball fields yet, but, but that's a start, and that's going to induce a lot of improvements over there. And also at Heber, the Heber Park, we, um, we don't have that yet, but we're working on a grant that, that's in progress, uh, about $972,000 to improve the Heber Park. And so we also have, I didn't list it here, but we have, uh, still have some park funds that we're working on, deciding where those park funds are going to go. Um, we know we have uh, some space at Cordova Park. We know we have some space at Heber Park to make, we desperately needed fields. Myself, I'm, I like, I'm a sports person. I really like fields and we want to increase those fields. That's one of the main complaints we're getting. We need more fields, we need more fields. So we know that, we're working on that. And um, also, you know, all of the complaints that we get from the parks needing lights and we, receiving all those complaints, we're listing those complaints down, and we're gonna be working on those complaints, but as you can see, we have a lot of things going on, so we have to prioritize, especially like we get a water break or something, we work on that first, and then we work on the park stuff, but um, we, we do hear your concerns, and we're working on those things, so I wanted to let you know some of the reasons why we're, we're not getting to those things as fast as we could. We really need uh, more resources, but these are, these, are the, these are the main things that we're working on in terms of capital improvements. And I'm sorry I had to go so fast that so I was asked to go hurry up. So, Good is job. there any questions? Yeah, I, I actually have a few. <clears throat> um, Please. Uh, as far as um, I, I know, you mentioned that we you were fixing some of the piping under underground. Water and with pipelines. all the overlay that's happening in the city, I think everybody in the city has seen that. Um, not just the project on Cesar Chavez, but I mean, all around the city, you can see that work's being done especially on the streets. Um, and my question is, is it, is it a good idea to overlay a street, for example, when you get closer to the downtown area or, or the, you know, the older part of Calexico, to overlay a street when you know that eventually the, the piping underneath is just, what, 70 years old? Yeah, at least. I mean, so. I guess, I guess my question is, should we maybe not do as many streets but fix the, the piping before we do the streets? I, I, I guess, I, well, I'm saying, you know, are you taking one step forward and two steps back? I, that's, that's my first question on, on, on the piping issue. Because I know, yeah. I know that uh, the, pipe, the pipes are breaking uh, now. 
maybe you can enlighten us a little bit. Some people say it's the pressure, but I think it's just they're too old. They're cement, right? Uh, cement pipes, I guess. Asbestos, cement in some cases, um, steel in other cases, just uh, not good, yes. Yeah, so I, that's just something that I, that I was thinking if, uh, it, do you guys take that into consideration? When yes. When a decision to pay, to overlay a street? The staff has been um, very concerned about that issue. The, the thing is with, with overlay projects, it's Measure D funded. So you can't use Measure D funds for water pipeline. That's street funds only. So those are allocated streets only. But you have a good point that maybe we should consider replacing some of the, the um, infrastructure prior to the overlay because you know we had a few t instances that we overlaid the street and we had to cut open a manhole, et cetera. So that is in our, in our, in our minds. Okay, that's the first one. Um, <clears throat> with regard to the vehicles, I, again, I don't, I don't have a, I know that there's been grants, grants that the city has gotten before specifically for, um, I know we have some trucks that are um, hybrid trucks that there was a grant for, uh, for the state. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I just wanted to mention that as far as them being old, I can tell you that um, other cities in our county, they, they have trucks that are like, from the 80s, and they're saying, hey, it's not, hey, just because it's old doesn't mean it's, uh, it's not good no more, True. right? <laughs> but, um, and Thank then you. on the, uh, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, but on the, on the baseball fields, I, this is something that I've, for the last three years, I've been figuring out how we can get more fields, and I know there's some money set aside for Cordova, um, but no matter how we look at it, it seems that if the city does it because of the issue of prevailing wage and having to pay so much, is there a possibility um, seeing how we have, for example, DS, um, uh, desert uh, uh, softball team and, and other entities, nonprofit entities that, is there a way for the city to maybe give them the money for them to build it so that it's cheaper for the city? We, we wanna have the city attorney review that first. Okay. Yeah, but that's a great idea. Okay, uh, what I'm, you know what I'm, it's, mm -hmm. it's cheaper for, for a nonprofit to do it than for the city to do it. So, um, okay, I guess that's, yeah. that's maybe for another time. No, it's a, another it's time, a good idea. But, but, okay. Mayor, quick question? Sure. Uh, just for the benefit of the community, because we do have uh, general funds that are specifically uh, tied up. Uh, for the benefit of the community, so everybody understands, these funds, as are mentioned there, federal funding, state funding, mm -hmm. Measure D funding, enterprise funding, I might have missed one, grant funding. Um, no general fund. No general, thank you. Just that's to why you see, yeah. That's I mean, why you see the funding source down, that's why I put the funding source there. You don't never see one that says general fund, none of them. Thank you. Just to make it clear. Yeah. Uh, my other quick comment was, um, we've had a lot of natural disasters uh, in our footprint, in our general footprint. You've got hurricanes in Texas, hurricanes Climate in Florida, change. Caribbean, earthquakes in Mexico, fires in, the, in Northern California, Southern California. What I'm trying to get at is our major uh, focal point in this area is obviously earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're doing this, but again, for clarification's sake, um, all the new infrastructure is being retrofitted to take into account that we are in a seismic area. Absolutely. And you, you see a couple of those projects that were specifically because of the earthquake we still haven't gotten to since 2010. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Togo. Mr. Scobat. Any other comments from the council? Thank you, Mr. Dale. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Where is Roy Durantes when you need him? Where's Roy? Is Roy gone? Roy Durantes from the he should be covering that. The good stuff. Right? All righty, guys. So we are now at the public comments portion. Of good news doesn't sell, I guess. Yeah. No, it doesn't. <laughs> right. Roy's already stated. There's no that. news like bad news. It has to bleed, that's what Roy said. No, if it bleeds, bleeding. it leads. Yeah. All righty. Public comments and public appearances, <laughs> not to exceed three minutes. This is the time for the public to address the city council <laughs> on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and your place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disrupt or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. In this, if this item that you wish to comment on is a consent item, please comment now. The City Council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when you get to that item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments directly to the City Council. 
Mayor, may I um, ask a question? Yeah. I, I know we have the blue knights here, We're and they're way at the end. Could we maybe move them up? Move them up? Mm -hmm. okay. We were um, also discussing that. I just asked the city attorney if that would be okay. You were reading our minds. So yes, if we want, would like to do that at this point, do we make a, a I would motion second that. that we I would motion. Okay. I'll and second. We're trying to motion here, gentlemen, being that you came to visit us here with your item, and it's all the way down to the end. Sorry about that. We're Plus, your bikes are taking all the parking. Nah. <laughs> And it's a nice night for a drive. Um, we're going to move you guys up, but that, that'll be right before item 13, okay? So first we're going to do what we're at right now, but we'll still get you a little early, okay? Just to let you know. All righty, so we'll start with um, Brent Nieben, and I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation. Plus, you didn't specify where you wanted to be, so this is the more appropriate under public comments. Is that okay? What, excuse me? You are under public comments. Is that okay? I said, that which one yes. to be? I'm here to Hurtado and uh, council, honorable council members. Uh, my name is Brent with Y Green Energy Fund. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Something's wrong with that microphone. Do you mind? Um, oh, sure. Sorry about that. I'll move. <clears throat> yeah, that's weird. Should be working. Apologize. Done. Done. My, my name is Brent with Y Green Energy Fund. I'm the uh, manager of government relations for Southern California for Y Green. Y Green is a PACE program administrator. PACE stands for Property Assess Clean Energy. It's a, a state level program that was approved by, by uh, AB 811 in 2008 and, and it has grown in, uh, in, quite, in, in popularity uh, with the last couple of years to the tune of as an industry uh, about $4 billion and 160,000 properties mostly in California, some in Florida as well and uh, Y Green is about to open up in Missouri. Um, its intention was for water efficiency, uh, energy efficiency, and renewable mm. products like solar and wind power. Um, so that's what the focus is. Uh, y Green uh, came in on the scene a little bit later um, under SB, uh, SB uh, 555 in 2010. And all PACE administrators like Y Green have to operate under a joint powers authority. So we initially started in localized areas in Chula Vista. We were picked by CVAG to be their PACE administrator and then up in Sacramento. But in 2015, late 2015, we did a statewide validation through Golden State Financial Authority, so any jurisdiction could opt into our program. So we're in about, up to about 250 uh, cities throughout California. Uh, it's a unique public-private relationship because we have to be approved at the state level, have a JPA, and then also every jurisdiction has to approve it by a, res a re resolution as well. So we were approved by the county of Imperial about two years ago. Um, however, your major cities, uh, we have not yet been able to um, assist their um, property owners yet. Uh, a couple of differences as well as SB 555, which is again a little bit different than the earlier, earlier legislation. Uh, we, uh, we can fund seismic under SB 552 uh, as just this year. So we've begun uh, that process as, as well for seismic retrofits. A uh, quick question. So this would be an equivalent to the HERO program for... We water water conservation Absolutely. versus energy, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. We're, all, we're, we're one and the same, except we're direct competitors. Correct. So they're Bank of America, we're, we're World Fargo. Okay. So we're, we're head to head and uh, competing for contractor business, as well as we do a couple additional uh, items as well. Okay. Yeah. So my, my ask today is, um, and by the way, um, last year the governor signed uh, consumer protection legislation, AB 2693, in this current legislative session, pass some additional consumer protection as well because of this public-private relationship. What I feel it's done is improve the consumer um, um, interaction with the contractors because um, of a few things. There like, has to be now a confirmation call where the, it's explained to them what it is, not just relying on the contractor, um, require permits, you look at the contracts, um, and then the contractor is not paid until it's satisfactorily completed at the end of the job. So that's, uh, that makes it different versus if you just pull out your, your checkbook or get credit card uh, or other home equity financing like Green Sky and there's others out there. So I ask is that uh, you consider Y Green um, so we can operate in my community and compete with the HERO program because we're uh, the runner up uh, residentially to them. So thank you for your time. What, quick do you, question. Do you have any um, information? Yeah, or, absolutely. Or, okay. I, I, brought that. I have a question. Is this, is this something that needs to be brought to the council? Yes, we have to have our resolutions approved uh, okay. th through Golden State Financial Authority, which would uh, make your city a, uh, a uh, associate member of Golden State Financial Authority. I, I, personally, I personally don't um, 
I, I don't, I mean, I, I know the HERO program. I, I know how it works, and I'm assuming it's very similar. Right. Um, but the only, the only thing that I'm worried about as far as the, consti the constituents of people in the city, I know that in the past, um, there, there, there just so happened to be a lot of um, fraud happening with the solar panels uh, locally, and I, I, I invite you to maybe do some due diligence behind that as far as um, people that uh, were lied to and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so um, just, uh, I guess if we're gonna put on the agenda, just uh, maybe you can give us some background on exactly um, if you guys do do solar panel uh, um, uh, for homes that, that um, you guys make sure you know exactly the issues with IID because I know a lot of people were sold solar panels and told IID was going to hook up to them, and then turns out IID wasn't. So um, big, big issues with that in our city. A lot of lawsuits and a lot of people that have called and, and are very upset about what's happened. So just wanted to let you know about that. I don't know if you knew or not, but no, we hopefully. Do, we, do, we do fund solar, and we do put the contractors through a vetting process before they can use our funding. So uh, we monitor them uh, via their contracts. And uh, to the to the property owners themselves, um, and we do have a di dispute resolution team. I came from residential solar, actually, so I'm not completely aware of, of what happened here. Um, but there's so there's so much we could do: put con contractors on watch lists and communicate with the homeowner, um, and not met, let, not to let them get paid until the job again is satisfactorily signed off by the property owner. Mm. As far as interconnection and that metering agreements, all that, some of that's um, stuff that's done on uh, between the utility and and uh, the, the, uh, the installer. Okay. That's where the community protections come in. I, I believe it versus you just pulling out your credit card or <coughs> checkbook, there's no one else watching out for you in those circumstances. But because if you're using a PACE administrator, which is a uh, now state level consumer protection standard <coughs> that's used across the board, then there'll be at least a, a, a method okay. for a protection. Thank versus, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All righty. Thank you so much. Yep, no Very problem. valuable information. Thanks. And yes, we had some some very difficult Good vending uh, issues, vendor -ish issues with the solar companies. But <coughs> all righty. Next speaker, Mr. Jason Jung. Everybody should be speaking on this. One. We start. Well, I'm here just to kind of let the council know that um, Isaac Navarro is going to come over and tell you guys some stuff. But um, you know, unfortunately, the chief left. But he should. You know, I've been here before and told you guys about the chief and the cruddy job he's doing. And I'm here again to do that. You know, it looks like they broke into Officer Navarro's uh, locker. Somebody stole his weapons or misplaced his weapons. He can tell you what happened with that. And um, I don't see why they're harassing him. The chief is harassing them. The lieutenants are harassing them. After 27 years of service to this city, you guys are going to treat them like that. It was sad. Mr. Soul was there with me yesterday waiting for <coughs> Mr. Navarro to come out of the PD. He came out pulling a box or two boxes out after he had back surgery, his injuries. After 27 years of service, the chief is going to treat him like that? That is just disgusting. And the lieutenants, even worse. Serrano, because he's a big fat liar. I'm just going to remind you again that when you uh, come to public comment, yeah, anyone, I know, I know, the, um, the rules are that you need to direct your comments to the council. Thank you very much. OK. okay. Mr. Javier Gonzalez. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, members of the council, staff, members of the public. I was here to thank one person, but um, I'm going to clear up some things. I will mention right now that the center is a health and safety fair. It's actually the health, heaven and health fair. Collectible health and safety fair was moved to February. That is where it's uh, our fair from the neighborhood. It's an official fair sanctioned by the National Neighborhood Watch, National Crime Prevention Council, and the National Charities Association. We're going to have it in February. We had a little problem with Heffernan, but we support them. We'll be there Saturday. Just wanted to clear that up. The other thing that uh, we just heard outside is that they questioned the uh, ribbon week. Why it was today? I guess something something in the agenda about marijuana. 
the crime prevent the uh, that week that meeting crime prevention proclamation the fire proclamation and the review proclamation was submitted by Kennedy Gardens after we saw you know we talked to the city city manager and to the persons in charge if they allowed us because it's important that we proclaim that just want to make sure it has nothing to do with the marijuana thing because next week it's red ribbon but the reason we were here is we want to thank Mr. David Dale he was gladly for the first time we see somebody like him, the director, I actually spent the whole evening in our neighborhood, walking the parks, walking the alleys, talking to the neighbors, and uh, actually looking at how we've been 20 years behind, you know, our trees, baseball backs up falling down, a lot of stuff, but we have a lot of confidence. We're, we're gonna be patient, and we told him we're here to help. We just wanna let you guys know that he was there, he talked to the neighbors, and uh, we heard Mr. Uh, Villa's presentation. I think the city's moving forward, and we wanna help with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mr. Jim Jun Kim. Jun. He's not here. Oh no, yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, the council and the, the citizens. And there was called the. I was mentioning about two meetings ago when we approved the uh, consultant for the uh, major D money. And when I was counsel, I was to recommend to the staff to say the use the major D money and then our the water and waste, waste, uh, waste fund together to replace all the pipes and uh, uh, replace the, uh, or improvement of the, our uh, sewer system and uh, what called the other one is drain system because the the last of streets, the old street, they are when they have a heavy heavy rain, they've been flooded and down, especially in downtown and Rockwood areas and north side of the now Rockwood and use the major team money to final uh, pay so we can do our underground the system to synchronizing to we do our system first and then with the major money for the lay, uh, new layoffs. So that was the mayor recommended the last time. And I believe I'm glad to uh, Mr. Uh, Real was recom uh, rec uh, recognizing on those. And we should do that, do same amount of the money we can do more cleverly to benefit for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Awesome. Mr. James Beaver. <clears throat> Good. Uh, city Council, Mayor, City Attorney. Uh, basically, uh, two, about two weeks ago on the second, I requested a letter from the you city clerk. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that all right? Okay, about two weeks ago, I requested a letter from the city clerk uh, just to describe my position. It wasn't a letter of recommendation. And uh, I was told that there was no policy. If you look at the back page of all that, those documents I gave you, uh, there was such a letter given to uh, Mr. Javier. I think he's here. And, uh, uh, you know, policy or is not policy, I'm not too sure. Uh, basically, that letter was for um, me applying for the Virginia uh, National Neighborhood Sheriff Program. That's all it was for. They wanted to make sure, you know, wanted some background, uh, my experience. And I also took a course by them uh, many years ago, uh, five weeks here in City Hall. Uh, Next year. The rest of the information, I'm just going to let you guys dwell on it. I won't bring it up. Uh, I think if I put it in writing, maybe you can guys look into it. It's unfortunate we haven't had a city um, commissioner's meeting. And the results of that is individuals are coming in here 
and voicing their complaints against the police department. This is not the forum, I believe. The, the, the reason for commissions is that they take that up at the commission meetings and then we make the recommendation or direct them to the chief of police. What's been happening as long as I've been here, they've actually been coming and voicing their complaints, identifying individuals, and I don't think this is the right forum. So please consider that. I appeal to the council that we start these meetings, and uh, I mentioned several of the uh, or city ordinance, government codes, whereby if we have three individuals, we can hold meetings. So please look that up when you guys have time, and let's put complaints in the right form. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. <laughs> I have uh, maybe just one more for public comment. That's Mr. Isaias Navarro. Good evening, council members, mayor. My name is Isaias Navarro. I'm a retired police officer for Calexico. After 27 years, I retired on medical. And I'm here to request your help with the uh, police uh, chief, I don't know why they are be withholding my uh, retired poli police credentials, but every time I go, they tell me to refer to, uh, to the city attorney. I already called the city attorney once when I got a letter a couple weeks ago in which it stated the uh, uh, weapons uh, were missing from my locker. I went to, uh, to contact the chief and uh, apparently somebody went to my locker, emptied my locker with all my items, my medical records, my medicine. The only thing that left is my, just uh, my medication, the boxes for my medication. And when I talked to the chief, I asked him, who went into my locker? He said he didn't know. That was two weeks ago. Later that day, he texted me and, and, say, and said that uh, Lieutenant Serrano went to my locker. I said, that's a violation of my Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah. And they, I don't know why my credentials, uh, retired credentials have been withheld. I have been asking the, the chief, but so far he refers me to the city attorney. You know? Also, I requested uh, for my property was, was in my locker. And after several weeks, I tried to get my property. I went yesterday to the department. I wanted to file a report because my property was being withheld without my permission. And finally, Lieutenant Serrano called me to his office after I've been waiting right there for a while. He, uh, he had a box, a trash uh, box with all my property dumped into it. It was bullets, money, uh, like I say, my medication. And uh, I asked him, hey, what's going on? What's, what's missing? He said that uh, I already took uh, all the, the department equipment and this belongs to you. I said, why is my property and dumped like garbage, you know? I put in 27 years for the department. I never had any, any problems. And I just want some answers. You know, why my rights were violated? Why I wasn't advised that my locker needed to be searched? Why did they think I have those weapons when they were stolen from the department? You know, I was, I was going to ask the Nomaro? chief, but Mr. the chief Nomaro? left. Mr. Nomaro, I'm sorry, you'll have to wrap up. Oh, please. okay. Thank you. I, I really do hope this resolves, but your time is up. Yes. Thank you. Okay, yes to... Uh, Mr. Navarro, I'm sorry. It, it has to be three minutes. I'm so sorry. Uh, it, it, my three minutes up? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, thank you, and I hope uh, I can get some help from uh, city attorney. Please, please if I can talk sure to him. you direct yourself as you've been um, um, suggested to you, that you, you should resolve those with the... Uh, okay. With well... I hope it does. I feel very disappointed. 
Uh, could you just provide uh, an update? Uh, you look into this and you provide an update for us? I had a meeting with Mr. Navarro today, and I did inform him that I would personally look into it. So. Thank you. Um, so it's a disgrace so for someone for 27 years to be treated like that. It does appear that you are having conversations with the city manager and the city attorney, so I think that that's where it needs to stay. So um, apparently you did. Um, we will have follow-up. Good luck. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to be now moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is our city council comments. I'm sorry, wait a minute, yes. On our city council comments, so we'll start to our left with Mr. Hodge. Do you have any comments, Mr. Hodge? Three minutes also. Um, yeah, well, I, ICTC is in the process of moving and uh, hopefully they're going to move into the uh, Rabobank Bank uh, that used to be there on, on Maine and Imperial. And it uh, seems like it's going to be a better deal and more accessible to, to people on foot, pedestrians, and, and uh, vehicles. Just, just to give you an update of what's going on. That's all. <clears throat> um, I... Uh with that last, um, uh, there's, there's things I want to say, but I, I, I think it's really, um, when a person gives 27 years to a city, you know, I think they deserve, um, you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit more respect, um, specifically when the person wasn't retired because they wanted to, but because another officer ran into him and retired him, um, specifically. Um, so it's, it's, it's just, I really hope that gets resolved. So um, that, that's it. Thank you. That's a bad situation. <clears throat> Just one thing, uh, uh, Mr. City Manager, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of um, future projects coming up. Uh, is it, uh, are you going to wait for yes, um, a final seal of approval? We have a lot of projects that be our, our I mean, we need to know that we're uh, working towards uh, receiving uh, new businesses and the possibility of uh, yeah. uh, homes coming up. An update, I don't know if to us or when it gets out on, 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 on sure. the video. We could, we, we could, yeah, we, we, some, some of those projects are in the infant stages of planning and, and, and project approval, so. But they're in in the city, so they, they look good. We can probably work on a on a on a summary report for you guys at the next meeting and present those that are that, that would look like they're they're going to be under construction soon. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all, Mr. Escobar. Uh, two comments, actually four comments. Two will be very quick. Uh, two serious comments. Uh, I work at the new port of entry. And there's significant traffic uh, that accumulates between the hours of 4 and 6 on Fridays from 4 to 10. Um, I know it doesn't belong or we don't own as a city of Calexico, we don't own that area. But I think it, it, uh, it is important that we let the authorities, be it the sheriffs, our ICTC or a combination of both. Mr. Boss, I'm sure, is more than willing and able to help. But we do need to coordinate efforts in order to alleviate the traffic. Uh, there's basically two lanes into Mexico going south, and there's four avenues to get to those two lanes, which causes chaos. If you think uh, Imperial Avenue is crazy, you should take a, a, a drive to the new port of entry or the east port of entry around 5 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. That's crazy. So, again, even though we don't own it, everybody and their mom thinks that Calexico owns it. So we need to be clear and we need to be proactive versus reactive. Uh, secondly, I, I recently crossed the border by foot, uh, the, this port of entry obviously on downtown Calexico, and I noticed that the same taxi, taxi company was parked uh, in the previous McDonald's facility on 1st Street um, uh, at the corner of 1st and uh, Rockwood Avenue, both on the east side and the west side. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is we need to have a coordinated effort on where we should put the taxi companies. Um, they do an illegal U-turn on Rockwood Avenue. 
And, and I know the pedestrians aren't exactly following the rules of the road going through all the, the pedestrian corridors that they should be utilizing, but at the end of the day, they Dangerous have the right situation. of way. They have the right of way. So we really need to be careful with that. So either uh, a suggestion I would have would be to take them to where they used to be, which is uh, on First and Heffernan, or I think we've also discussed Second, uh, Second Street and, uh, and uh, Rockwood Avenue. Uh, in this case, between second and third, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we do need to do something about that. Echoing on this comment, I know, it's, I know we're going a little long, I apologize. Um, it was about 90, 92 degrees when I crossed. I didn't mind the taxi driver not turning on the AC, but uh, obviously I looked around and nobody had their ACs turned on. So I think it, it, uh, it is critical to our city, it's October, uh, either we look at a specific city ordinance if it's in place to act upon it, if it's not in place to look into it. I think it's very unfair that the community of Calexico of Mexicali is subject to uh, public transportation without air conditioning services. If we don't have an, or or an ordinance, I think we should definitely look into it. And if we have an ordinance, why aren't we uh, enforcing, enforcing that? And again, it's October. So if we are not doing anything now, I think everybody and their mom has enough time to get it done by May, which is when the heat will come back. Um, last but not least, one of my favorite holidays, if not my favorite holidays coming up, happy Halloween, everybody. Have fun, be safe, take care of your kids. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take a treat. Take a treat. All righty, I just want to make a clarification to the speaker that was here that we had a little bit of um, uh, issues. Um, it's very important that we all understand that speakers that come to this council in any council meeting uh, come to provide their, their statements. However, um, there are rules in, in, a, in a meeting like this because it is a business meeting. So when, and when a chair is listening to some information that may be um, damaging to his case or damaging to the city, I felt it was important to stop him and ensure that he does direct his concerns to where it needs to go because his concerns are not of this council. It is now at a point as legal. So sometimes it seems as if I'm cutting him off to be mean, but actually I'm kind of preserving his rights and ours as well. So I apologize if that, if that looked a little rude. Um, plus we do have a very long meeting today, so we're trying to keep it on time. Uh, my statements uh, today will be about quite a bit of stuff going on. Um, and to let you all know, we have a very busy end of October. I believe in the 30th of October, we're going to have an MOU signing. Is that correct, Mr. Figueroa? Uh, very important MOU with the uh, New River Project, correct? If you'd like to say a few words about that, that's really important for the city of Calexico. And that was something that uh, Mr. Dale was talking about that's related to some... Yes, so I, I just want to state, uh, first off, Madam Mayor, Council Members, uh, Miguel Figueroa, Community and Economic Development Director. I just want to state that we were privileged, uh, we were given the opportunity to coordinate this important event on October 30th at Nosotros Park at 2 p.m. Um, I'm happy to share that Cali PA Secretary Matthew Rodriguez is gonna be here. Um, also board chair for the Regional Water Quality Control Board, Region 7, Nancy Wright is also gonna join us. Um, and obviously we're gonna have the presence of um, our mayor, um, which she is gonna be giving the welcome remarks to um, our dignitaries. Um, obviously, this is an invitation that we extend to the whole community. Okay. Um, we are also going to have the representatives from the IID and the County of Imperial there. Uh, this is a significant event, and, and not to steal the thunder of Mr. Dell's presentation, um, uh, but th th this, is, this is a long-going project, as all of you know, but this is going to be key, and the reason that, that's, that that event is going to be key is the fact that um, the, the fruitful efforts of our community, our city, are, are, are coming to, 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 to light right now. And um, the, 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 the uh, $2 million that Mr. Dell uh, talked about are monies that were secured back in 2005 by a former congressman in which he found the money of all places in the Department of Transportation. Uh, we were able to come up with matching funds, so now all that's coming together and we're gonna see it that, that day. So we wanna extend the invitation to the community a press release. Um, I just finished the draft agenda. Um, the state um, approved it. So we are going to be uh, having a press release ready for the media, possibly by the end of the week or early on Monday. So thank you. Even Bill Hodge can go? 
Can I go? Definitely, to yes. Thank you very much. It wouldn't be the same without Bill. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Appreciate that. It is very important because we need those changes for our new river. Um, the city of Calexico is also hosting a couple of other things going on Let's in the rest of down. the uh, month of October for the League of California Cities. We're having it, what date? Here in Calexico, Mr. Villa? League of California Cities? Yes, it's uh, uh, the 26th, 26. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. So league. the city of Calexico will be breathing life back into the leagues and uh, mm -hmm. very happy to host. Um, in Saturday, we will be having the health fair at the Rockwood Plaza, just this exact park right here behind. That's a really important health fair uh, in conjunction with the um, Pepperdine Board. Uh, I will also state that I also uh, am very concerned about the traffic down, downtown. Uh, there's been discussions with the city manager with regard to the taxis and the actual raiteros that they call them, the not registered uh, businesses providing uh, taxi services that are a huge problem in downtown. Uh, we also talked about the fact that right now Mexicali has an overlay uh, project going on uh, as you enter Mexicali on Madero. And so that is also creating a huge problem that Calexico has with the, um, the con traffic congestion that we're already experiencing. Or they're long. So I know that the chief himself ha and I have had conversations about having some detailed efforts in downtown uh, with regard to the correction of, of issues with the raiteros. Uh, that is just starting, so we are uh, working really hard to get those kinds of issues uh, resolved. However, they're so complex and, and, and unique mm -hmm. that it's going to take a little while to get it down to, uh, to actual satisfaction. Um, and I believe that the other issue that we also talked about was the concern that we have with the Grant Street access and the detours going on right now in Calexico. Because we have schools in that end, and then that is the one access that everyone's having to shift over to from Highway 98 mm -hmm. and the rest of Calexico. So um, there's some, some discussions and possible solutions, but as far as being very aware that we're approaching Christmas time, that the city is thinking of that, and that we don't want it to be more, it will probably be pretty hairy, but we're going to be working on it with as much attention as we can, knowing that we are have <coughs> all angles is hitting us with construction, but then again, yes. part in our dust. So I believe that in my case, that's it. I don't wanna take anything more from anyone. So Mr. Villa, would you like to have any comments? Yeah, just some very quick comments. Uh, as you mentioned, we've been fielding, uh, our office have been fielding a lot of questions regarding traffic. Traffic, a lot of it is due to construction, a lot of it is due to the fact that we have two major highways crossing our town and uh, we have been coordinating with the CHP and our local uh, enforcement, county and city, to try to see if we can get more enforcement on Highway 98. Uh, we do get calls uh, almost on a daily basis. They complain about truck traffic going too fast, especially during school hours when kids are going to school. So we are meeting with the school district. We are meeting with the county and CHP to try to find ways to make sure that there's more awareness. Caltrans is, is going to be putting up some, some uh, flashing beacons, slowing traffic down on, on Highway 98, and CHP is going to be more attentive, so, so drive the speed limit, please. And also, due to the construction activity on Highway 98, and as you know, uh, some, of the, some of the work they're doing, we're, People are, real, are, are, are going just about everywhere and trying to find the quickest way to get home or to work. So bear with us. We're going to be uh, seeing this for another two months, and hopefully Caltrans can finish early before the holidays. But also we have another element is we have the harvesting season coming up in the Christmas season. So we are going to be talking to the chief and to our public works department to see about increasing our, our traffic controller uh, operations to be able to be get there earlier. It seems like traffic uh, is 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 piling up earlier and earlier this time. So all that stuff takes a lot of a lot of planning and and a lot of resources to be able to contain traffic. There's nothing we can do about the traffic. It all funnels through here. It's uh, just a challenge is to try to find resources and a way to 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 deal with it and, and make it less painful for people. But hopefully next year we can be talking to you in a very different tone with all the improvements that we're planning to have. So we are continuing to coordinate with, with our partners uh, <coughs> locally and with uh, safety to be able to, um, to uh, appease some of the residents' concerns over traffic. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Hey. 
Moving on then to our next item, consent agenda. Uh, Do you guys have any items you'd like to pull? No, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve 10, 11, and 12. Second. second. Third. First by Mr. Hodge, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Now the blue knights. Now next, we're moving them up right. Next item. Mr. 18, right? ready? Discussion of potential action items number 13 is our 2017-18. Uh, no. We're moving up 18. Oops. Sorry about that, Mr. Gutierrez. You just have to wait for just a little bit, okay? Blue Knights. Okay. As we agreed, we'll have item number 18, the request by the Blue Knights, the Blue Knights International, for temporary use permit waiver of 135. I'm walking out with them. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, mayor, council members. My name is Martin Cuesta. I am past president and committee chairman. With me here is Scott Blackhall, sec chapter secretary. On behalf of the Blue Knights, I am requesting a temporary use permit to close 4th Street between Heber and Mary Avenues on October 28, 2017, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we are also requesting a waiver of permit fees. The Blue Knights International Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club is a nonprofit organization consisting of active, retired law enforcement men and women who enjoy riding motorcycles, providing, provide for mutual assistance, education, and social benefits of its members in the community. The Blue Knights have 650 chapters with an estimated 20,000 members in 29 different countries around the, around the world and growing each day. The local chapter, California 10, is comprised of officers and honorary members from all over Imperial County. Um, members represent federal, state, county, municipal, and uh, law enforcement agencies. On Saturday, October 28th, we will be holding our 20th annual fundraiser. We are expecting Blue Knights from Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, and Southern California. Wow. Every year we utilize this event to showcase the cities, the, the citizens, and the culture of Imperial County. To put it simply, we show off the, um, the cities, you know, our, basically our home and the people in it. Uh, Blue Knights participate in many events around the valley and donate hundreds of dollars uh, to different groups, explorer groups, uh, scholarships, and various charitable organizations every year. For example, during this event, we will present two $500 scholarships to IVC students. In addition, we have partnered with the Alejandro Maeda Foundation to present an additional five scholarships to IVC students that are in the law enforcement field or looking to be in the law enforcement field. Um, basically, that's my presentation. We'd be happy to answer any questions, and we thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, gentlemen? Uh, I just have a question um, for, is, is it true the saying they say there's only, um, it, it's, it's not if you're going down, it's when you're going down? Is that true? <laughs> there, there's a saying that says there's two types, two types of riders, the ones that have fallen and the ones that haven't fallen yet. Okay, all right. I, I make a motion to approve. I'll second that. First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Hodge. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. That was a Thank long you wave, very you much. guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you remind us again of your event? Please. Yes, it's uh, October 28th, and uh, it'll take us around the valley or take the group around the valley. We'll start in El Centro. We'll be visiting the Sunny Bono Wildlife Refuge, back to El Centro to Border Tactical. Then we'll go to Sealy, and then we'll end up here in Calexico, where we'll be having um, some a so gathering. Is that be at the and Women's Improvement Club? Women's Improvement Club, I'm sorry, yes. Ah. Yes. Sunny Bono Wildlife Refuge, yes. So like I said, we try to get our visitors to, to see the county that we live in and show them different things. And believe it or not, local residents get to see things that they have never seen. Y todo en moto. Todo en moto. Well, we did invite a car club this year. I don't so know if they'll show up. motorcycles. Can we drive in a car? <laughs> Follow us in the car, please. Oh. And, and there are motorcycles with three wheels. Okay. And it's beautiful weather. It's beautiful weather. And, 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 beautiful uh, weather for riding. We're very I'm proud jealous. that in Imperial County, we can ride pretty much all year. Summertime in the evening or early morning. But Lots of, most, uh, most places in the country, they put their bikes away for the wintertime, but not us. We, we keep them out and just, you know, 
very cautious, obviously, of everything. So, and we promise to keep it down when we leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Quick, quick, quick questions. Quick questions. Uh, when you get to back to Calexico, is there like a I don't know, carne asada plate or a barbacoa plate or something where we can attend, contribute, or no? Well, part of the fundraiser is the, the it's a poker run, and the participants, you know, you pay $30 for the rider, and if you have a passenger, it's an additional, it's $40 total. So the, the food's for the participants. You want to do the poker run, please show up at 8 o'clock on uh, in El Centro. <laughs> We're going to have breakfast. E Escobar on a motorcycle? I don't think so. He doesn't want to ride. He just wants the tacos well, or something. He wants the tacos. Hey, tell you what, uh, just show up and mention my name. And there so it's you open go, to the Escobar. Public. It's open to the public? Yes, too. Of course. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> there you go. You want to ride? You can't go wrong. Let me make sure I got life insurance. <laughs> Please. It'll be for my heart, not for my head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen, you for, for your patience very much. Keep rolling, rolling. All righty, now can I do 13? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, Madam Mayor. All right, item number 13. Now, Mr. Gutierrez, you ready for us? Item number 13 is our 2017-2018 first quarter budget status report. Are we rich now? <laughs> we waiving fees? <laughs> Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, Mayor, City Council. Uh, the next report is a, is a presentation only for your knowledge and receive. Not to take action tonight. Since the City Council adopted our budget for 17-18, this is going to be uh, the first quarter reports on expenditures. Um, the purposes of this, uh, of, this, of this report is to monitor progress and keep track of current expenses by your departments. Not just general fund, also the other, uh, other funds for the city. Uh, this report is going to be based only on expenditures because um, given the nature of, of the, the time uh, the city gets uh, revenues, most of the revenues, the two big uh, elements of our, of our general fund revenues are sales tax and property tax, and they will, they will come until December. And by that time, we'll do another presentation on the mid-year, uh, including revenues, expenditures. I think you have a package there. There is some for the public on the back. Um, it's a short one. It's for three pages. I know it's a little small, but you have a copy on your, your hands. So. I would like to walk you on, on, on this page. It's a year today, status September, September 30, 2017. And you will see several columns there for reference and comparison. We have general fund expenditures as a total with comparison for fiscal year 2014, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17 in our current budget and current expenditures year to date. From our approval budget for 13 million six seven thousand seven oh seven, the year to date expenditures 
As September 30, 2017, are 3,754,374, which represent a 73% of the current trend. The perfect uh, number of funds still available or remaining, it should be 75%, which is one quarter equals 25%. So 73% actually is still pretty, pretty good, and we did the target. Also, you will see a summary by the department that will show the progress expenditure report for each of your department, the city departments. And, and most of them, actually all of them, they they are within the target. Any number under 75% on the last column of the percentage remaining means that uh, they spend a little more. Not necessarily is wrong because they may have to make some expenses in the first quarter of the year, and they will, they will, uh, they will. Uh, proceed and, 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 and make up for the difference for the rest of the year. Um, well, I, I don't think I need to go the line by line or list every department. They, they take... Uh, Every department head of the city, the lexico takes proud, and they make sure they keep and stay with our plan. Our budget is a living document. It's not right in the stone. It will be adjusted as our department needs arise. But at this point, most of the departments are within the, the range. 75% left for the first quarter up to September 30, Sorry, there was a third page that I, I want to show you, not just, not just the progress on the general fund, also a progress report on how other funds are doing within our city. <coughs> you hear a presentation before from Mr. Dell that shows a big, huge, uh, construction in progress going through our city right now. Unfortunately, nothing of that is from general fund. The general fund is still has a gap that we will address on the second meeting by mid-year. Mm -hmm. Saying so, the only fund that has troubles in our city is the general fund. That will be addressed in the next presentation. And I, and I want to make, sure, make a, a comment on this report. That is for the first time in the city, we have, we have a report we include in our software a future called an encumbrance, which allow which allow the city to better keep track of our budget by the means of securing funds at a time that the PO is requested. We don't have to wait until the expense or a purchases or contract services pay to get the balance on each account for each department, which it means every time the department head, the department submit a, a PO, is automatically deducted from their available fund. And this report, as a very useful tool, includes that future already. 
which means we want to prevent overspending on our budget. We need to stick to our plan, and our plan is this budget, which will be adjusted as needed through the city going through the process. So this is the working. This is the working. You can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think that's important to mention because uh, because we need to show that our city is is, is tightening our expenditure controls, and we, we need to show our residents that uh, we can we we can present a good <coughs> report that will show uh, commitment commitment from this city council commitment for the department heads to the community. We will keep track of our expenditures, and this is the first report for the fiscal year 2017-18 that we show that every effort, and, 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 and I would thank all the department heads that I contribute to this, keeping track and oversee the expenditure report. Mm -hmm. Not only that, in case that we are taking steps, little by little, to recover financial stability. How to control expenses first. We want to focus on the revenue later, Mr. Villa and the administration. Mr. Figueroa is working on that. I think with final department, but at least rest assured that we are tracking our expenditures. Good job. Okay. Good job. Can I add a little bit? You, Just you. yeah. So so for the for a long time now, I think we we have been trying to move uh, most most of our most of our accounting tracking to the software to the new software system, and this is what um, we have now, and is we we feel very good and comfortable that our numbers are up to date, almost on a daily basis, and. These reports, as you can see, the last column is probably the most important for me when I look at these reports is to make sure that if we're looking at a first quarter report that those numbers are above 75 percent. Or above. So obviously, when we, when we present to you the mid-year budget, we're going to make sure that all those numbers are above 50 percent. This is good. If they fall below, if there's probably some ano anomalies that happen with departments that, over, that spend, it's because they have a one-time expenditure that's pretty pretty big, but we, we track it and we try to get the, to, to make sure that the department had understand that we're looking at these numbers almost on a daily basis so that we don't, our budget doesn't get overspent. And, and we're also looking at revenues as, as uh, Mr. Gutierrez mentioned. It's probably too early to tell because most of our revenues come in in December for property taxes and, and sales tax. And we, we get better numbers by about, the, by about December of our revenue picture. So th this basically represents a, pretty much an expenditure report, but also anticipating, based on track history, what our revenue should be. Very conservative uh, policies that we're, we're implementing here with expenses, expenditures. We still need to close a budget gap of the $3.2 million that we said we were going to do and you direct me to do, we're about halfway there with, with the, with the uh, fiscal policies that we, we've been implementing. So, and I think um, Eduardo mentioned something is we need to stick to the plan. That's kind of our, 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 um, our model, stick to the plan. So that said, if you have any questions on it, um, we'll be happy to answer you. I all right, we have a couple of actually, um, I'm sorry, we have a couple of um, comments. Mr. Public. Gutierrez, are you done though? Are you, are you finished though, Mr. Gutierrez? Excuse me? Have Anything you completed? Else? No, I'm sorry, I'm not done. I, I just, I just want to emphasize the, the importance of this report. It's very simple, it, it's just short, but it shows a lot of commitment. Commitment from, from you, commitment from the department heads. We try to recover our path to financial stability, and what I said, this is the first step. We control the expenditures. We control the expenditures. Thank you. All righty. We're going to then have uh, one speaker, Mr. Jose Hinojosa. 
Actually, I have a couple. Can, and can we comment afterwards, Madam Mayor? It's just easier. Well, you might answer my question. Good evening. Um, looking at page one, one. Jose Nocosa, 1056 F. Doris Street. Um, page one, if we go to the CFD special districts, mm -hmm. um, since our um, ad hoc committee meetings have been canceled, um, there's no way to get answers. Is there a way we can get an update of, the, of this, of this found fund account? Um, are you asking? The council that? Council and our interim fin uh, finance director, or uh, city mayor um, and city. Uh, you know that when, when you come up to speak, you, we usually can't have that kind of thing. Um, could we have that, him help you that after that, after the meeting? Can, can we schedule a meeting now? Um, usually we don't do that in this, because you're, you're doing public comments right now. You're basically no. talking to us. We're not supposed to actually even have an inter interplay here. This is an agenda item. I'm, this is not public comment. I'm sorry, but you are public commenting. So when the public comes and comments, we cannot come and really necessarily interject into the conversation. But what, you, what your concerns are is that you would like to have some more information on this item. And yes, you, you should be able to direct yourself to our city manager. And, and if you can get them out there like you did just right now, maybe that'll be helpful to you. Because in these settings, it's usually um, not the place for the back and forth fully. Mm, city attorney, is that, um, I, uh, how, how can uh, council can, ans can ask questions and be answered and the public uh, cannot? Not, uh, generally to have these readings run smoothly, generally the best course is to allow the, co the comments and then allow the comments and the council themselves when they deliberate can either work with the city to provide mm -hmm. some of the answers or get back to you. But generally to allow the meetings to run smoother so we don't get a back and forth is to pr pr provide your comments now when the city council and staff deliberate the item, then they can provide further information either now or at a future date. Yes, since our, our meetings that with the city have been canceled, have not been uh, taking place, I don't see any, any, any where else where I can get answers. I don't know if council um, can, can um, help us. Who's canceling the meetings, Mr. Hino Jose? Uh, Mr. Villa or any, I don't know, um, Who's okay. in charge now? Okay. Just a second, just a second, Let, let's do this. Okay, Mr. Hinojosa particip participates in an ad hoc committee. Ad hoc committees, in, in what I know, is, is Hearthstone, and they usually were having meetings when there were subjects. You were asking a question about some of the content of here that you like the detail, and, and I'm not sure. Are we prepared to have that much detail to prepare and, and present to him right now on this answer? That just asking? Maybe I have a quick answer that if, if this is an overview of the budget, and obviously if you're interested in finding out more information about account 903, which is a hard stone, you're welcome to come to our finance department and we can give you a printout of all the details. That's what we want. The, the reason why we haven't had a hard stone meeting is because we concluded all the issues that were being discussed, mainly dealing with uh, the infrastructure improvements. So that's why we haven't had a meeting and, and because that's mo most of those issues have been completed. Correct. But it doesn't mean that we don't want to help you, of course, but these are not the settings necessarily to go into the back and forth. We're trying to move the meeting forward, but because you have such a big question with a big answer, I think it's best what he's suggesting. Okay, and my, my second comment is on, on, on the second page where we have a, the Hearthstone Street Improvement. We have another million dollars that are coming in for a fiscal year 17, 18. Um, I don't know, where is that? Where, where are those funds coming from? We spent it last year on the infrastructure project. Now we have another million dollars that are coming in. And I just spoke to Mr. David Dale about um, the decision our, our mayor back then, uh, Mr. Armando Real, made of our, about our entrance at La Jolla Ponce Boulevard, where there was a yes from everyone except from Mr. Kim. Um, and he doesn't, um, he has not been briefed or even commented about, I just spoke to him right now and trying to set up a meeting. Um, I really um, would like to encourage every council member, every appointed officer to uh, work for the city. We are, we are the bosses here. Um, we, uh, we elected you and they elected uh, the appointed officers. So who's, who's running? Who's running the, the city? Who's running the show? Is it the city 
or is it the, the necessities of the community? Whose, whose uh, interest are we, are we going for serving? Thank you. Thank you. Got a lot on your plate there, Mr. Dale. <laughs> All righty, next item on, I'm sorry, next speaker for number 13 is Mr. Kim, Jung Kim. Uh, again, good evening. The, what we have, uh, I'm, I'm pr proud of the, our financing department for the city. And with the, the minimum of numbers, they've been tremendous job. We are in the track. And at least we have the deficit account, I mean the budget, but we're still in the factual number. We can deal with it. And I'm glad to, we don't deal with any more the comic books. We, are, we have a real, real, real numbers in front of us. And that is based on a lot of sacrificing the sec, uh, security or safety on the uh, citizens. We have a lot of things not been serving the community right, but the, that cost the savings on the budget. I, when, I, when I see the budget, they have, we're gonna have about 1.7 million dollars or more to cover up by the, the what's called the uh, what they call the that they have some left over from the last years the, and we have a four hundred thousand dollars savings from the uh, sal salaries and probably gonna have another 1.2 million dollars more for the saving for that and I'm I'm expecting to see it to get to write agreement with the uh, unions. And also, I'm urging to council to take the management positions to pay cut, and they don't. And they st that's we are, we are council members and the citizens, and we are disgracing to our employees. And they have to be cut from the heart, I mean the head, it's not been that. So they, they need to have an initial movement from the, the top position to willing to take, take, take cut. Not the council. Council actually is a hundred, couple hundred dollars, nothing there. It's actually the top of the leadership of the administration has to be, take the cut. That way we can have all the negotiations gonna be smoothly going on. And I hope that you guys do doing good for the savings money on this year to, I hope, Oh, I, I'm trying to give the plow to make the balance the budget. I believe this is very important to to way we set it down. And also, uh, Mr. Kinohosa, I think he left, and the million dollars, they only had one time deal about the hearthstones from the, the settlement of the insurance. But how come they have a million dollar again this year? With where? So we as a Hearthstone have a, some kind of a undrying the world every year to get a million dollars to get spending? They already spent the last year a million dollars, close to a million dollars. And how come again they have you this year again? Okay, so again, the council member, please don't, don't, blindly to supporting the administration, you, you guys have to do your job to representing community interest. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Kim, well, very much. You. All right, so that was number 13. Okay, moving to the next item. Item number 14 is the request. Well, I, I have a quick comment on the financials. Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez, Mr. Villa, uh, very, very uh, quick and, and uh, concise, constructive, constructive criticism. Uh, we're looking at a first quarter update on the budget, and you're providing information for 14, 15, 15, 16, which really does not relate to the first quarter. And the reason why I bring it up is there's a lot of information here. And I love numbers. I'm weird. I love numbers. But this is very convoluted. This is, this is confusing. And the last thing we want to do is confuse anybody. And uh, this is no detriment to your work. 
or to your dedication. This is really trying to uh, present a clear picture what of our $3.2 million deficit and how we're doing for the first, first quarter of our fiscal year. I think we, it, it uh, would behoove. behoove us that we make it a clear and concise a picture to the community as well as to ourselves, mm -hmm. to everybody involved. Um, I'm not going to step on anybody's toes. That's really your job. I'm just trying to make it clear that we could maybe improve upon the presentation, maybe for our, our six month or a second quarter review, just to make it a little bit clearer, a little bit easier to read, uh, where you don't need a, a CPA to really do the numbers and do this and do that, uh, and to really explain and have the community understand where we stand in this case. My proposal would be for the second uh, quarter review. Yeah, it, it will. It will be in that, in that <clears throat> format. It, it has the purposes tonight for this, including several columns from previous fiscal years, is to, compare, is to do a comparison and see the progress that the city is doing from the last two years and a half. Historical From numbers. $19 million, we are talking about $13.5 million on general fund expenses. So this progress that, well, we don't notice because we still have a big gap but it's progress. It's and, a lot of progress. And again, it's not really of, of, of the hard work and the dedication that uh, with Armando's leadership or Mr. Villa's leadership with the direction of this council, it's really trying to appropriately send that message that you just said that we went from 19 million to 13 million and how we really sacrificed from a city perspective on services, on employment reductions, et cetera to let them know in a very clear and concise format. That's really where I'm coming from. I understand. Understood. Mr. Hodge? Yes. Uh, bless, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. A couple of areas. Um, art in public places on page one of one. Uh, the budget was 50,000. If I'm reading this right, there was no spending. It's 100%. Uh, is the the mural program is that still in effect? That's the Andrews department. She says yes. It is in okay, but it's not coming from this fund. Yes, it does. It does. Okay, that's that's what I was. Uh, that's what I thought. Okay. Simple answer. And and more clarification, uh, Mr. Via, four seventy seven Earthstone Street improvement. So. Uh, Listening to Kim, is, is this true? Is this another 100 mil? No, no, no. I, I think what we, we, we've been getting the bills for all the improvements that we did out there, and we allocated a million dollars in this fiscal year because we were going to conclude the project this year. Probably on the next report, you won't, you, you'll see this number in another column as an, as an expense. We're going to expense it out to the, to the improvements we did out there. Okay. Where are they expensed out right now? I'm sorry? Where are they expensed out right now? We're still getting bills for those. We, they haven't finished all the work. They're still concluding. So we're still getting probably two more bills, the last bills, right? Um, and that's when we're going to transfer the money out. Mm. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I had a comment, but I will, mm -hmm. I'll refrain. You're not going to come in? No, I'm good. Okay. So, so, the, so the report is, is receiving file recommendations? Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Yeah. Moving on. Great about that. It's important. Item number 14. Your foot. Request City Council really approval funny. of the recommendation, public works reorganization, uh, and job classifications, and including the adopted fiscal year 2017-2018 position allocation list. Yeah. Motion to approve. Would Second. Would you council like to just move on, or would you yeah, like to just, actually have some just vote on this. details here from Mr. Dale with regard uh, to this I think, item? I think oh, we all got I'm it. Comfortable. No, wait yeah. a minute. I'm comfortable. I, I, the, only question, the only question I think I had was if we were giving people raises. I hear we're not giving anybody raises, so I'm, well, I motion to approve it. Yep. I'd like to say something. Second. Be, be quick. <laughs> Excuse me? Yes. Uh, well, at first, before I had heard that there were raises, and I just think that that would have been very, very unfair uh, with all the other uh, departments, so I'm glad to hear that that's not the case. But uh, I just need to state that, that uh, that would be an inequity for uh, 
these departments to get raises while others are not. But if you're saying that that's not the case, then I say let's go ahead with it. Motion to approve. Okay, we second. Do I have my second. First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I'm sorry, item That's passes. Right. <laughs> Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's all the legwork you did, David, when you met with us. Because <laughs> we're tired and hungry. <laughs> item number 15. Introduction and waive first reading of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Calexico, California, adding Chapter 8.50 to Title 8 of the Calexico Municipal Code relating to the registration and maintenance of vacant and abandoned commercial, industrial, and residential properties. Yeah, Motion to approve. Yeah, second. No. <laughs> if, you, if staff doesn't mind, sorry. You can do this. Yes. If you're I mean, not offended, because I know you must be prepared to say something. If, you, but if we did our homework, we should know what we're voting on, right? Let's, do you let's, mind? Yeah. No. Motion to approve. First by Mr. Real, second by... Mr. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's pretty self-explanatory. Go sit down. Good job, good job. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph, Mr. Morales. <laughs> He's been hanging around with David. That's the shortest sales pitch <laughs> I've ever seen. If that's not staff efficiency, I don't no, know. No, the, the report was very clear, very clear, even for Mandy. That's what happens to you after 27 years living here. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something? Okay. I missed that one. Whoa. Moving on. Moving on. There. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, number 16 now. Approval of reimbursement agreement with Trinity 341 LLC, Trinity Farming and Manufacturing Inc., and Environmental Consulting Center. Just for clarification, Mr. Oh, now, now yeah. you want, now yeah. you obviously. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes. Very so, quickly. So the, <laughs> the, uh, the item before you, yes, uh, exactly two, item, two action items in one. One of is request approval of a reimbursement agreement uh, with Trinity for them to be able to fund uh, all the necessary work to do the environmental clearance for the project. And then on, on, on the same action is to be able to approve an environmental consulting agreement, professional consulting agreement with a consultant to, pro to prepare the environmental clearance document. The, the proposal is attached to the, to the report and it's in the, um, in the form of an environmental impact report that would run around $80,000 to prepare. So in, in a nutshell, um, the, we're not paying for the environmental report. No, no. Trinity Manufacturing is paying Trinity for Trinity is paying for the whole thing. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Oops. Is, is there public Sorry, comment? I didn't have, I, I didn't recognize public comment. Mr. Kim, before we take a vote. First, first things, I like to see that agreements supposedly to be ca uh, carefully to look into the, all the negative impact on those uh, cannabis uh, growing. So this community is going to be very, very dangerous. And I know that the five council member was favorable on this. But as a citizens and concern, we have a lot of young generation in here, of course, and some other others too. And we should be have to be very careful with every matters, every factor to check to secure the community not vulnerable with the marijuanas. And and the other one is funny things, and we same time recognizing anti marijuanas. And same same time, we're approving the project to the to go ahead for the future. So it, is, it looks like a on this, uh, disrespect the people who fighting against the drug. At, at least at least they could use different time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Motion to approve. Second. 
Uh, first by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I will be a no. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be then on to our last item, which is the mm. authorized purchase for damaged camera server, item number seven. Motion to approve. Maria, did you have <laughs> like, Are you serious? You like to staff? Yes. Okay, staff, sorry. If that's okay with you, we don't wanna, or would you like the, to say something for the public, Mr. Divia, on this one? We, we, we actually have a brief presentation on that. You wanna come up, Sar Sergeant? I mean, it's a broken uh, camera and we need to fix it, right? Server, Perfect. I motion to approve. Second. <laughs> it's two for one sale today. First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Hodge. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. So do we want motion, to motion cover to adjourn? The... Oh, Mr. Real. God. We have it. second. I'm hungry too. Uh, do you guys uh, want to go ahead and just forget about forget future agenda items? I have one item. My, one item? Uh, I'd like oh, to. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have a vacancy in the uh, police commission, and I need to uh, add add someone to it. My my uh, individual. Oh, add it to the next one. Okay. Yeah, for next time. Is that it. Okay, Mr. Hodge. About two months ago, I, I was oh. discussing feature items. Yeah, We're discussing with uh, Angel, <laughs> and uh, we are working on with. Uh, the, the lead here is Miguel Figueroa on uh, a, uh, a festival type event on First Street, hopefully in November. Mr. Figueroa, would you, would you want to add anything to this? No, it's not at not this time. Not the appropriate time right now. We're going to get out of here on time, okay? <laughs> uh, that's okay for next time, for next time, mm -hmm. because it's, it's going to be a positive thing for the community. All right, thank you. So if we can have a detailed report on the next agenda. Thank you. About the event. Okay. About the event. It's uh, Calexico Downtown okay. Nights. Councilman. Motion to, to adjourn. Hold on, hold on. We have a couple more here. Uh, Mr. Escobar, did you want to add anything on there? Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Motion everyone, to for adjourn. Being so patient. Do, do I have a second? Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Usually we don't need motions, do we? Uh,